this is you. This is who she told you not to worry about. What is going on my beautiful LARPers and LARPists? Today we're gonna go over what upgrades you should get for your CZ Bren 2. Now the CZ Bren 2 has been around for quite a while now. It's a very well proven uh, platform. And I'm not gonna really go over the CZ Bren 2 itself. I'm just gonna highlight the accessories that I slapped on these guns here. Now before I get into all that, what is my relationship with the companies that helped me kind of put this video together? Um, first off, CZ USA, they did not send these out to me. I did purchase these myself. They have sent me, well, a firearm in the past, which was the CZ uh, or the Dan West and DWX Compact. But as far as these and any other CZs that I own, I did pay for. Now, two companies that helped me put this accessory video together was Haga Defense and HB Industries. So Haga Defense did send me one part, which is on here, that's the lower. And everything else, as far as accessories that I'm gonna get into, uh, HB Industries did send that out to me. I have purchased quite a few parts from HB Industries and Haga Defense, but they were kind enough to send these out to me to uh, make this cool video for you guys. Now lastly, I wanna give a huge shout out to my channel sponsor, Atlantic Firearms. They are a huge supporter of this channel and they help make a lot of these videos possible. And not only that, they sell really cool pews. Um, I just purchased this one right here. This is an AIMS AK-74. Now, the AK-74s are extremely hard to find nowadays, especially the ammo, but they did have one of these in stock that I kind of said, hey, I need that. So they went ahead and sold me that. But aside from that, they have a bunch of other cool pews on their website. I believe they even have some brand twos on there. So, but yeah, guys, go ahead and check out Atlantic Firearms for your pew needs. Now, let's go ahead with something that you can't really see here on camera, but I'll put some and b-roll up for you so you can see it up close but this is the gas regulator now HB Industries, this is an upgraded HB Industries part, but HB Industries is calling this their optimized gas regulator assembly. Now this is um, a little bit more functional than the stock version that you see here in front of me. So it has three positions and each position does something I guess same but different and as opposed to the stock version you have two positions and then the third one is just a complete shut off on the stock one you have a larger hole which is basically uh your normal shooting right and then i believe this smaller hole is for the suppressed setting there's a side where it doesn't have nothing and that just makes it into a single shot bolt action type gun and hopefully i got those two holes uh i didn't mix up those two holes that's exactly what my wife said once HB Industries is kind of like opposite of what this one is. It's uh, the first setting is suppressed. Second setting is like your standard setting. So if you're just going to shoot um, normal brass case ammunition. And third setting is if you're going to shoot potentially more uh, like dirty ammo or your gun's a little bit more dirty and uh, you want to have a more consistent and reliable ejection pattern. Um, so low, medium, high. Um, I ran this one on the low setting. On this one here, I ran it without this uh, can on here because unfortunately I just got that can in uh, yesterday. But I did not run that with a can. So when I ran it in the suppressed setting, it did not function. It, it wasn't even cycling that uh, brass out. Second setting where it should have ran with the brass case ammunition, it did not run that as well. I don't know why it didn't run that. So stock, I've already ran like maybe a thousand rounds or 1200 rounds each on these guns. But after putting the upgrades on them, I put like around maybe another 800 or so rounds through each of these. Maybe it's from me not oiling it up ever. Uh, it was kind of maybe dragging a little bit, but it did not function on that setting too. So what I did was just put that over to setting three, which is gonna be your dirty gun or your steel case ammunition setting. And it worked perfectly fine from there. So I just left it on setting three and dealt with it that way. I'm gonna go ahead and test it again after I clean it and see if I can knock it down to setting two, but hey, that's what those settings are for, right? Now, next up is the rail. The rails are both aluminum and they are both M-Lock as well. It's really cool having M-Lock on the Bren 2s because what they come with originally is like one slot of M-Lock on each one. I gotta look back at my old parts. Sorry, I didn't bring my old parts out, but I'll throw up a picture somewhere around here so you guys can look at how it looked before. Um, 
but you get a lot more real estate with these rails, especially the longer barreled versions. Uh, this one is a shorter barreled version, but you do still get quite a bit of real estate on this guy here. On the stock version, I wasn't even able to put these hand stops on there. I was just basically with nothing on them. I think when it came to this one here, having the longer barrel on it made it look a little bit more funky. So having this makes it look really clean and more more modern, right? More, more cool. Now, if you're looking at this rail here, this one has two screws here on the top. You can take that off and you can make your adjustments, but I didn't really need, feel the need to take that off to make adjustments. I could just stick uh, a, a round through here and move that up. Also on the original rail that comes with these, make sure you take your time on taking these bolts out because they are a huge pain in the ass. They kind of do what SIG does when it comes to uh, rock setting these screws into there. And it was extremely difficult, especially since I didn't have the right equipment for it. <laughs> I kind of tried to manhandle everything and I got basically off of this one, I got basically every bolt out of there other than one and I stripped the head so I had to drill off the head, pull the original rail off, and then kind of heat the rest of the screw that was left and graft some pliers and unscrew that. It was just a mess. So I just basically took this one to my local gunsmith and uh, I just told him, hey, good luck. <laughs> Call me when it's done. But once you get them on there, they are extremely solid and extremely comfortable. Um, I did not have any kind of shifting or wiggling here, and they do blend in with the rest of the firearm. If you're feeling all the way from the top, all the way back, and trying to see if there's any type of lip or anything like that that uh, kind of shows you that it's off, it is not. It is sitting very perfectly on there, as well as this little guy here. And it also does a really good job on dissipating the heat. So I was uh, shooting suppressed, and I was shooting pretty fast, and uh, it wasn't until maybe like the third or fourth mag when I was actually feeling some heat kind of coming through there. But moving on back, you have the charging handles. And on this one, unfortunately, I forgot to put the charging handle on this one for the video. So when I put this together, I kind of got frustrated after that bolt. So I kind of just said, hey, F this, I'm not gonna deal with this anymore. So when it came time to go shooting and do this video, I forgot to put it on. So this is a uh, extended charging handle from HB Industries. And this one is a little bit different than the other one that I have right in front, the shorter one there. So if you're looking at this shorter one, which does have the extended charging handle, this one is just a straight charging handle, but is more extended than the stock version. But the difference between this one here and this one here, that this one is at like a bent downward angle. So what that is doing is it's allowing you to put optics on your rifle and it is keeping your hand out of the way of uh, the optic mount when you're charging it. So if you can see that it's bent downwards, I can grab it at this angle and it'll keep my knuckle from smacking that optic. Now next up is going to be kind of a personal preference on what you would like. So I have the stock lower on this one here and I do have the upgraded Haga Defense lower on this one. So let's go ahead and start off with this one back here, which is the stock version. The stock version, I have a couple of HB Industries parts on here. Starting off with the safety selector, this safety selector is also HB Industries, and it is very tactile, and it is a lot more extended than the stock version. So if you can see that they protrude a lot more out on the left and right compared to the stock version. The trigger is another upgrade. This is their aluminum flat face trigger. And this trigger I prefer a lot more than the stock version. So those of you that have ever felt a stock CZ Bren 2 trigger, it wasn't too like squishy feeling, but it was like getting a rubber band, right? You stretch out a rubber band and you pull it back. You're feeling some resistance, but it didn't feel like a, a um, crisp type of resistance, right? Usually like on a Glock, you'll get some resistance and then hit a wall and then pfft, on this, on the stock version of the Bren 2, you kind of came back and there was really nothing that you felt until you hit like a small wall and then it broke. So this trigger is very predictable. When you're pulling it back, you hit a wall, you don't get any of that weird springy sponginess that you feel in the uh, stock Bren 2 triggers. Then you hit a wall, then it breaks. And you also have this little stop back here that prevents you from 
kind of over pulling that trigger to the rear because once you hit the wall on the stock Bren 2 trigger, it breaks and then you can still pull that trigger all the way back to the, the basically the wall of the uh, grip. This one just stops it right there. And that actually allowed me to get um, pretty fast splits. So that way, when I was pulling it to the rear, it stopped and then I could go ahead and reset that. So this one was extremely fast for me to get splits. And also I didn't go over the reset, but the reset is extremely nice as well. Right there, and pull. Now, as far as upgrades on the stock lower goes, that's pretty much all that I put on there. There is one more thing that I wish I would have upgraded, which would have been this um, extended like bolt release here. And the reason why I say that is because when I was using this bolt release, and this is like a push it up, it locks it. And then when you push that down, it lets that bolt go home. Probably very minor that that's gonna happen, but just having it right where that trigger is was just making me feel a little bit weird. It was just a mental thing that I just didn't want to uh, accidentally have a accidental death pop, right? That is one of the upgrades that I'm still gonna do to this brand too. I believe Haga Defense is the one that sells an upgraded version of that. So they sell one that kind of comes out and protrudes on the left and right. So you can have your finger on the right side of the trigger guard and push that down. I believe it's kind of similar to like the Scorpion. And yeah, let's move on to the lower on the shorty right here. So this one is a Haga Defense aluminum lower. So this lower is allowing you to use AR-15 drop-in parts or AR-15 parts basically. Um, so I have a AR-15 grip. This is a Strike Industries grip. Then I have the Strike Industries uh, safety selector. I do only have the safety selector on the right side. Um, that's just my preference to just have one on the right side or the left side, sorry. And I do have a Velocity Systems flat face trigger on here. And what I found is interesting on the trigger portion is I originally wanted this metal lower on this one here. So I had this polymer one on the shorter version and the metal one on this one. The gun was not functioning right with this lower on this bigger one here. So I didn't really look too deep into it just yet, but the problem I was having on this one here was it wasn't striking the primer. This is a like a competition flat face trigger from Velocity Systems. I didn't know if it was uh, not enough power smacking that firing pin enough to hit that primer. Um, so I was kind of bummed out that I wasn't going to shoot this one here uh, the day that I filmed these. Luckily, the lower isn't the serialized portion, so I was able to swap them both. And it was functioning fine on the smaller one. I don't know why, it was just doing good on this lower one, so on the smaller one. Now moving on to the mag release, this is something that I kind of uh, didn't really like on this lower. And it's probably just a me issue just because I have really small hands guys. So when it comes to releasing that magazine, I kind of have to stretch my hand out as far as I can to reach it. If I'm sitting here in like a natural uh, grip position, on an AR-15, it kind of sits a little bit farther back, so I'm able to hit that magazine, magazine release a little bit easier. This one sits a tiny bit forward where I kind of have to stretch my finger forward and release it. Again, not a huge issue. It's just a me issue. Um, so those of you normies out there with normal size hands, uh, don't even pay attention to what I'm saying because you might not even have that issue. Now moving on down to the mag weld. This is an extremely flared out mag weld that's really easy to do reloads. I really like this mag weld. And last part on here is the bolt release. On this one, you cannot use a standard AR-15 bolt release. I had to put the stock CZ Bren 2 bolt release on this one, which wasn't an issue because I was already tearing apart the other lower that came with this one, so. Do I think these upgrades are necessary? Like I say in every video, I don't think any upgrades are necessary. I just think it makes it a little bit more pleasant in your experience while shooting this, and it makes it look a lot cooler. Um, I think you getting training and going out and taking courses and classes and buying ammo is, is the best thing you could ever do as far as 
shooting the weapon system and using the weapon system. But if you do have the money to put these upgrades into your firearm, these are extremely well thought out parts that you can put onto here. Do you think they're necessary? Do you think uh, you don't really care for them and you um, just like to run your brand to stock? It's basically all going to boil down to you and what you prefer. But there you have it guys, upgrades for your CZ Bren 2. I think these guns are pretty underrated. I don't really see a lot of CZ Bren 2s out there and when I do see them, they're usually left in the stock configuration. Enough of my rambling. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. I love you all, appreciate you. Catch you in the next one.